Today we're going to be giving this little table a makeover. I like the top of this table. It has a unique design, so we're going to do something really special. I always start my makeovers by cleaning the piece. I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner mixed with water for this. And I just scrub the piece, and then when I finish scrubbing the entire piece, I rinse it with a wet rag with some water. When it's fully dry, I want to prime this piece because there's some kind of mm, really shiny finish and I don't want to worry about my paint not sticking to it properly. So I'm using Country Chic's Bonding Primer. It is so easy to use and you only need one coat. You just want to make sure that you don't leave any drips. When I finish applying the primer, I leave it for at least 12 hours. And this time I just left it overnight to the next day. Now for the something special, I'm using the Mint by Michelle Peacock Transfer. It's so pretty. I had to decide on how I wanted to place this. I didn't want to cut her little feathers off there, but at this point, I thought that I was going to use the pieces that I cut and use them along the sides and the edges of this table. It took me probably a whole day or half of a day to decide on how I wanted to place this. The placement is always the trickiest part for me. So right now I'm tucking, I have some on the side and I'm tucking it under and this is how I think that it's gonna look at this point. I thought that I would just add the sides that I cut after I decoupage the bottom. So like right now I'm just measuring it out and seeing how it's gonna look. But after decoupaging, the bottom down, I did ultimately end up changing my mind and you'll see that soon. So I just give it a nice spritz with my water. I don't want to get it too wet and then I'm using Verithane's water-based polyurethane to glue it down. And I work in rows. I work in small rows when I'm decoupaging because it's just easier for me to control. Usually you'll see me work with plastic wrap, but I was all out of plastic wrap and when you get these they come in a little tissue paper so I'm just using the tissue paper instead to get the wrinkles out of my decoupage paper. And now I just continue working my way down the decoupage paper. If I feel like the decoupage paper is tugging a little bit or giving me a hard time, I just use a little spritz of water with my water mister, a little mist of water. And it really helps it to sort of, I think it expands the paper just a teeny tiny bit to where you can pull and get rid of a lot of those wrinkles. Um, but you don't want to overspray because then you'll end up ripping your paper and if you do rip your paper it's okay you can fix it with paint but you know you don't want to rip your paper so just a little spritz will do the trick This is the point where I decided that I don't want to add the sides anymore, the extra clippings that I cut off. And it's unfortunate because I cut the feather off of her head and I'm missing so much of the beautiful piece. But because this table has the frame, it might look really, really great if the frame was painted. So I dry the piece um, and I'm using my heat gun, which also helps to get any of the wrinkles out. If you follow Mint by Michelle's Facebook page she always has really great tips like this and she's always doing like Facebook lives where you can see um, her decoupaging and painting and this were this was one of the tips that I saw from her Facebook live it's really great not only am I gonna dry the piece much faster but it really does get a lot of the wrinkles out so now that it's dry I'm gonna cut the sides off that I thought I was gonna use since I've decided that I'm not. I'm just using a, a really sharp razor blade 
You don't want to use a dull razor blade or it just won't cut right. So make sure that your blade is pretty fresh and new and you'll get a nice clean cut. And now I just do the finishing touches on my decoupage paper. Since it's dry, I do see that I have two bubbles. You never wanna leave the bubbles in there because if you do, your whole entire paper can come up. So I just get these little disposable needles from Amazon. I fill them with some sealers and then I pump the bubble. And just pushing the sealer around and pushing the air out of the little teeny tiny needle hole, it helps to get rid of those bubbles. Now I'm using Mint by Michelle's mineral paint in the color Time and Space. It is, it's a black. It is the purest black of all blacks. I just wanna give this table a refresh with the black because it's you know probably 20 years old or maybe even more I have no idea but um, it just it it's got a lot of bumps and bruises so it'll give it a nice refresh and I I know that I want to paint the frame of this still in another color I know it so this isn't going to be the last color I paint the table which actually looking at it now it looks really great in all black, but I just, I want it to still be more. I wanna give it a little bit more because this is such an awesome decoupage paper. I really don't wanna go over the top and take away from it. So I wanna be subtle, but still fun in what I do next. So I decided to go with this thunder and lightning color that I have by Mint by Michelle because it just seems like it was the perfect color. It was the perfect match. It goes on a little bit lighter, but once it dries, it dries um, this just beautiful deep blue that matches the peacock in a really nice way. I'm just using a small brush and I'm being very careful because I want the edge to stay black and I only want to paint that frame part on the sides. And then just to bring some of the blue down to the base of the table, I'm just painting the trim. And because I didn't tape off the sides, I didn't use any green tape or blue tape. Now I have to go around the table and just do some touch-ups because I painted freehand and my hand's not that steady. <laughs> my next step is to seal the entire piece. And I'm using Verithane's water-based polyurethane. That's what I used under and over the decoupage. But I'm gonna spray the entire piece. Um, I'm gonna spray it with my sprayer three times. I wait for it to dry in between coats. It's just, it comes out flawless with the sprayer, um, the clear coat. I still have a bit of a rough time painting with the sprayer, but the sealer, it's so worth it. If you're thinking about buying one to seal, it comes out so nice. Now for the resin pour, um, my last step is to do a resin pour and I'm using art resin. You can use it indoors. You can, you don't need to wear a mask. You can, it's optional, but they say you don't have to. Um, it's UV protectant. Um, it's exactly what I was looking for in a resin. I will say it's a bit pricey, but I think it's worth it and all resin is kind of pricey. But I think it's worth it when you're doing something like a special project, you know. I don't use resin all the time, so for me it's totally worth it. And you just, the hardest part about this entire thing is pulling off these little caps. <laughs> this resin is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume. So I just, I know that I'm going to use one cup of the resin and one cup of the hardener. So I just measure out with my measuring cup. And there's a few things that you wanna be careful of when you're using this resin. 
and that is to mix exactly 50 50 one to one ratio because if you don't your resin's not going to harden the right way so i'm very very careful when i'm pouring it also be sure to have the proper ppe which are gloves and glasses you do definitely have to protect your hands because you can get some burns and it's not going to be pretty and, and definitely your eyes. I have, I go to the Home Depot, um, you could probably get them on Amazon and just get some of those plastic glasses to put on over your eyes. I have those all around the house <laughs> just in case, you never know when you're going to need them. And one more tip about this resin is you don't want to use it if it's way too cold or way too hot because your resin won't set. I think that the temperature to use this is um, like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can actually look that up. But I did turn my air conditioner off in the house. Now when you're done pouring your resin, you want to make sure that you mix it really, really well. And they recommend that you mix it for three minutes. Now, I set my timer just to be extra because I want it to set. Um, I set mine for, uh, I mixed it for four minutes. And it's pretty thick. It turns kind of white and then it goes clear. And you wanna make sure you're scraping all the sides and everything. And tons of bubbles are gonna come. Um, but don't worry about that because you need to use your torch. It's You can get a $20 torch on Amazon. They're so easy to use. I was Im intimidated by torches a couple years ago. I don't know why. <laughs> well, because it's fire, that's why. But they're just so easy to use. It's just like a lighter. So now I'm just pouring. I'm making sure that I scrape the sides to get everything out. And I quickly realized that I didn't pour enough. So I had to mix some more. I did an extra cup. So I did half a cup of hardener and half a cup of resin. And that came out really, really bubbly. Um, but I'm still not gonna worry about it because you get 45 minutes to work with this resin. So that's a pretty long time. Um, it's not gonna start setting until 45 minutes after you pour. So I knew I had enough time to mix it again and re-pour and I felt really good about the whole thing. Like this process was so easy with this resin. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just, I, I really like it. If you do it right, the results come out really nice. This resin is self-leveling, but I just kind of want to move it along here. So I'm using my little craft stick to push it to make sure that it's down in all the edges. You know, if you wait a couple minutes, I'm sure it would meet. I've had some resin that actually didn't, and then there was holes, but this one, it moved pretty quick. Um, but I, I still, I just want to make sure that it gets in all its all the spots that it's supposed to be. And now I'm just using my torch, and you can see here all the bubbles, how quickly it pops the bubbles. Now I will say that this one, the bubbles kept coming up, so it would pop all the bubbles, and then all of a sudden a few more bubbles would appear. So I did use my torch for about. I would say eight minutes on this, which for me kind of seems like a long time to be torching, but I mean, it came out beautiful, so I cannot complain. <laughs> and when I say eight minutes, I don't mean like I sat there and torched it for eight minutes straight. I torched it and then I would wait and I would look at it and another bubble would kind of pop up. So then I would pop those bubbles and then I would wait a minute and I would look again and if I saw any more, you know, so just you just really want to keep a good eye on it and i wanted to hurry it up and move it along because i i have dogs in my house <laughs> so i always get worried that the dog hair is going to fall in my resin so i wanted to cover it as quick as i could and i'm just covering it with a cardboard box because that's what i have but if i had a paint small paint spray tent um, that's probably what i'll buy for future that's what i would use and the resin takes 72 hours to fully cure. And here it is all finished. It's like glass. That resin is so hard if you tap on it, you can tap on it like glass. 
I love the way that this turned out. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The decoupage paper, it's like a showstopper. It's just so pretty. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you wanna see another fun decoupage project, check out this video right here.